we don't have really a, a good um, retirement system here. So you have to be prepared. So I'm just preparing. But, um, you know, so that once you are retired, whatever knowledge you can through with yes. your life, you can just be able to share it to everyone and then pass on. And then I think that's the biggest legacy you could yeah. probably do. Yeah. You're listening to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard. Here's your host, Tabitha Bright. Hello and welcome to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard, where I get to speak to property investors from around Australia about their investing journey. My name's Tabitha Bright and I'm the head of coaching here at Positive Real Estate, where we help people build wealth through property. With over 8,000 clients across Australia and New Zealand, there are some incredible stories to tell which hopefully make your investing journey that little bit easier and will inspire you along the way. My guest today is Ram Balvin. And if anyone can inspire you, it's certainly going to be this young man. Uh, He has put it all on the line to make sure that he succeeds in his investing. We talk through what it's taken to buy seven properties and why it is so important to him living in the Philippines to create wealth for himself and his family. Enjoy this conversation with Ram. Hey everybody, welcome along to the podcast. Uh, Today I have a bit of an extra special interview. I have with me Ram Balbin. Now, Ram is part of our team in the Philippines and his role here at Positive Real Estate is that of an acquisitions officer. So basically Ram's job uh, is he works alongside with our acquisitions people here in Australia. They're the guys that look out and head out and do all the work to find awesome property deals for our clients. So Ram's always out there working hard, locating deals, doing the due diligence, um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) negotiating with developers, all that cool stuff to bring some awesome deals um, to our clients. Now, when I popped over to the Philippines recently, I caught up with Ram. I heard a little bit about his story and he's actually got a fascinating story that I think all of us as investors um, can learn from. (laughs) <laughs> and it's also a lesson in you do what you've got to do in order to get a result that is different from what everybody else is doing. Because often, you know, I'll hear clients say things like, um, yes, I want to invest and I want this amazing result, but I don't want to change my lifestyle. I don't want it to infect my day to day. I don't want to be stressed and I'm time poor and I don't have time to do anything extra. And it's like, well, that's great, but I don't, um, you know, I'm not a unicorn. I don't have a magic wand. And if you want a result that's outside what everyone else is doing and everyone else is getting, sometimes we need to give something up or we need to make a sacrifice in some way, shape or form to get a different result. And that Ram here has taken that to the max <laughs> and he's got an awesome <laughs> story to share. So enough of me talking. Welcome, Ram, to the podcast. Um, yeah, thanks, Steph, for having me here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be more excited than me. So, um, <laughs> so tell me a little bit about yourself. So um, tell me a little bit about your background, about growing up in the Philippines. Maybe not everyone's had the um, luxury <laughs> of getting to the Philippines and um, meeting yeah. people like yourself. So tell me a little bit about that. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, my name is Ram. Uh, I'm from the Philippines, uh, the capital city of Manila. So uh, we are a family of five. I'm the second son, um, the middle child, I would say, <laughs> but <laughs> but I would not say that I'm the rebellious type, but probably the most adventurous and uh, highly independent. Um, uh, my dad is a politician and my mom is our CFO. Ah. Mm. Very good. Uh, chief financial officer. <laughs> he managed <laughs> all their funds. <laughs> but I you know, yes. 
<laughs> well, uh, of course, there's a trade-off with this kind of family dynamics. I would say, you know, you're happy because your dad is doing something great uh, yeah. to its constituents, it's kind of. But of course, as said at the same time, because you will never be the priority. That's why we kind of grew up independently and persevere. Right, because your dad was so busy with yeah. with work and being a politician, so you guys had to be pretty independent. Um, and I heard that you're a little bit of a uh, little bit rebellious, maybe a little bit independent. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, being a middle child, you're kind of in the between. You like, you know, just like a, all other middle kids, you just need um, an approval to your parents for doing yeah. something great. Yeah. yeah, wonderful. And so, tell me about your first job. Oh, yeah, my first job. I used to be a Starbucks. Barista, like, you know, Starbucks in the Philippines, like a thing, <laughs> because, you know, coffee is quite expensive. So it's just like a social symbol. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, during those dates, either you're a celebrity or a Starbucks barista. Yeah, like everybody just got amazed with the barista, you know, but, you know, <laughs> Um, I kind of like the, 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 the relations I have with them because until right now, we're still get in touch we still have a once a year get together and that's for 19 years straight yeah wow from starbucks from starbucks yeah it is um and then after that i had my first real estate exposure in the middle east dubai um you know dubai as it is they wanted to be the best in everything yeah so yeah they tried to make the impossible possible they just can take no to an answer Oh. Yeah, so I got the role of a project coordinator in Dubai. So what I do is trying to coordinate with the government, with the architects, and even negotiating with the bank. And you know, but to be honest, I don't know anything. It's just have I had this boss who trusted me and guided me all throughout those days. I kind of like the job because you'll be able to meet a lot of people on on that role, but. After that, um, recession, recession key, I think that was around 2009. So I decided to go back here in the Philippines. But I knew then that I really wanted to be in real estate. Um, I started with a local agent and tried to become an international property agent. So basically, our role is to promote Philippine properties overseas. So I... Wow manage on um, Asia and Middle East accounts. So, so what basically we do, we just network, create a sales channel, um, try to go to different kind of expos, seminars, and all sorts of gardens, even birthday, you know, just to be known that our presence is known in that particular area. So I got a long run at, on that for five years. And um, uh. Well, because I decided to quit because uh, well, one thing is I got burned out on selling. <laughs> but then wow. since you're exposed with um, a lot of property investors and you know that you wanted to be one. So now I'm, I'm now I'm a part-time property investors and just look for a job that will help me out pay my monthly bills. That's <laughs> <laughs> which makes, which makes total sense. So just to, yeah. Just to summarize, so you um, mm. <laughs> you got your first job in Starbucks as a barista, yeah. which is awesome, mm. um, and you still catch up with them every uh, for the last year. nineteen years. Yeah, every yeah, year every year, yeah, it, which is <laughs> which mm -hmm. is awesome. But then you wanted exposure to real estate, and you ended up in Dubai. Mm -hmm. That's and, right. Right, and then and you were selling. Um, and you were selling property over in Dubai or you were working for oh, a developer? I'm working on a developer that then it's a project development. So we get our client who would like to develop and then we're in between to, you know, to manage everything. That yeah, our client. So, um, gotcha. So project coordinator. So you were co coordinating yeah. with the architects, the government, the bank and everything to get these yeah, developments. Right. Wow. Yeah. So that's a massive role. Um, but you felt you didn't you like you didn't actually know anything about it. But you yeah, I mean, I'm learned. from just just um brewing some coffee, and then you just got this role. <laughs> well, fake it till you make it, right? In the sense, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> and it says here in my notes that you loved it because you're exposed to people that you know mm-hmm. had had a, a force of mm-hmm. nature and and you got to learn from them which is really awesome mm-hmm. but then when the recession hit you went back to the philippines um and yes. so you were doing this international role of selling and selling philip um property from the philippines to international mm-hmm. investors mm-hmm. um and you were required to network and do um and to build sales networks for yourself. Um, Mm -hmm. You said that you got a bit of burnout from that. So you were obviously working long hours and um, and it just got too much, did it? Yeah, Yeah, because um, we have a BAM and the BAM is so huge. (laughs) (laughs) Many people... uh, Sorry, you go. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, there's a BAM, but there's also a trade-off that if you cannot get that bomb, your commission will be cut off like that. Ah. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what Ram's mm. saying, because not everyone that's um, listening to the podcast is um, mm. familiar with um, with sales speak. So um, Ram's saying that he had a BAM. So that's a bare-ass minimum. It's uh, military speak, I think, BAM. <laughs> <laughs> a bare-ass minimum for his sales result and that's that bam was um from what i gather ram was a high a high figure and so Mm -hmm. and if you didn't hit that figure then it also impacted the commissions that you did have yeah so yeah because because the company invested to you that much so yeah kind of makes sense as well yeah so they want a result so that was a very Mm -hmm. tough role and um and so tell me because I know you've sacrificed a lot in your investing journey. Mm-hmm. So tell me tell me a little bit about this. So um because you started with positive real estate, you decided to have a change in role. Um mm-hmm. so tell us about that. Well, I'm still on this journey and I'm happy where I am right now. Good. Well, it's not easy, but I'm enjoying every step. So yeah. So during the start of the journey, there's a lot of sacrifice. I yeah. compromised my personal comfort to achieve my um, first rental property. Yeah. Well, I live in a capsule. Um, just to give an image, like um, five by three. So I was um, living on the middle. So it's kind of near to the to the ceiling. So yeah. it's really hot. So I remember I have a small fan. Um, Every time I put my hands on the fan or my feet on the fan, that's already, already a luxury for me. Um, and I still remember, uh, I have a small um, cabinet inside that room, but then I still have two luggages at the trunk of my car and I used to park it in the church. So every time I uh, go out on my car, I sneak outside because the parking boy is tr- chasing me. I'm so thrifty back then because I don't want to spend another uh, another friend to, to give. But, you know, church is parking is free. This, he just want to screw me. Um, yeah. So since then, I just I just to com- uh, come from uh, just to compensate that discomfort. I remember I my daily shower, I used to shower in Anytime Fitness. And every weekend, I go to Jim Jilbang. Um, Jim Jilbang is like a Korean sauna where you can spend 12 hours inside. Uh-huh. So, yeah, yeah. So, I thought that's this crazy need to stop. So, I purchased another property. Now, I'm jumping, leaving one to another. Yeah, and it's go cycles and then ending. Yeah, journey. Wow. So, so just to summarize once again, so mm. you decided that you would do whatever it took in order to buy investment property, and so yes, what that right. looked like for you was to severely downgrade your day to day living. And mm-hmm. so you were living in um, a capsule. Um, capsule. Yeah, and um, so uh, much like the capsule hotels, I would imagine in Japan and stuff, where basically <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so what's a capsule like? Explain a capsule. <laughs> it's uh, it's like you're a cookie inside the oven, waiting to be, you know, <laughs> to rise or something. Oh, right. or it's just like it's just like you're inside a casket that you are put 
inside your uh, what they call this one um it's like uh uh what they call it uh your final destination where you're leaving tomb something like oh, that like a locker <laughs> like a locker or something <laughs> yeah, locker, locker. Yeah, yeah. wow so you're literally <laughs> you're literally in a locker pretty much and mm -hmm. and that was why where you had the fan to keep cool because as you guys know <laughs> and i know now because i've just got back from the philippines it is hot there and it is humid mm -hmm. and so you're in mm -hmm. the, you're essentially going to bed in a locker um mm -hmm. and you're showering at the gym mm -hmm. and you're doing this to save money to get a head start in your investing yeah that yeah right? that's right yeah that's right that that's is right crazy ba ba uh, ram I, mm -hmm. I the, that is nuts. <laughs> and um, how long did you do that for? Uh, I'm, I'm still doing it until right now, to be honest. Uh, well, I do this because this is my uh, long-term um, strategy because um, when my productivity drops, this um, this property will help me out on my living. So, But then this is my long strategy, but I still have also a short strategy, which I do. Uh, most often it's like um they do wholesaling and buy wholesale on a short term. So yeah. Uh, okay. So take me through that. So you've got a long-term strategy of buying mm -hmm. property and holding it long term. Because I know mm -hmm. you and Sam Saggers talk all the time about property mm -hmm. and about strategies and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's been a bit of a um a mentor for you, hasn't he, Sam? And um mm -hmm. and yeah. So, oh, yes. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of, it's it's a Warren Buffett kind of thing, it's like a value investing, so where you just hold the property, like what yep. this is, hold never sell. Yep. So you just get a quality <laughs> property, hold it yep. for a long term, and then this yep. property will kind of you know benefit uh on the time that you know you don't want to work anymore, and just kind of mm -hmm. help right. you out. Yep. So that's your retirement plan, basically. You're buying yeah, hold as right. your quality property. It's your retirement plan. And then mm -hmm. you said you have another a second strategy where you're flipping some stuff. Yeah, that's right. Um, just to raise more capital. Um, well, I, it's it's kind of guilty because some of them I use it for my pleasure, and then yeah, some of them I of course I reinvest and acquire more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And what do you do for fun? Because you said you use it for your pleasure. What do you do for fun? I well, I love traveling. So yeah. If I don't have a house, I travel. <laughs> so yeah, I would say yeah, I would say I'm a homeless property investor, if that makes sense. <laughs> Ram, you're amazing. <laughs> And so while I understand this isn't going to be for everybody, as you can see, like Ram is giving it his all. Um, and so where was the last place that you traveled? Where have you been recently? Uh, Cambodia. That was the last place that ah, I've yeah. been to. Mm -hmm. Cambodia, yeah. And where else have you been? I've uh, been to Japan, um, um, Southeast Asia, mostly Southeast Asia. Uh, Japan's wonderful, isn't it? Of um, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, it I is haven't been wonderful. to Cambodia. Um, and so, tell me your biggest mistake. Tell me your biggest lesson. Mm. Take me through that. Okay, before that, a uh, rental property. My first real estate deal is an um, off the plan in the Bay Area here in the Philippines. Um, yeah. Well, I knew the market and its potential, and I partnered with a friend. Um, but suddenly he let me on that deal just to so that he won't ask me any more questions. I give back his share with profit. Yep. Um, during those seasons, I'm already overwhelmed with different kinds of expenses. And um, I have an existing um car loan. Um so I did continue, I did not continue with the property. I have negotiated with a developer and I lost 50% of the dep deposit, but but uh, you know the saddest part is that property now grew. It's worth three hundred percent, and it's yielding at twenty five percent. I think that's oh, the <laughs> actually that's the best performing um property I should have. <laughs> well, I could Ouch. have blamed my co buyer, easy, but yep. yes, I blame that. To be honest, I blame him that day. <laughs> but now re realizing it's the fear that break the deal, yeah. I should have at least try. 
to lodge more good application. Yeah. You know, it's it's a culture thing here as well that we see death as death. Don't mm-hmm. go there, don't touch it. No, but now I understand the power of leveraging and other yeah. financial matrix in property investing. Yeah, that's um, a powerful lesson, Han. So I'm just going to reframe that for everybody. So mm-hmm. basically the first real estate deal was an off-the-plan you did in the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. So an A-class mm-hmm. property potentially, but you were doing it with a friend and mm-hmm. um, and your friend didn't want to complete the deal. Is that right? Yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. Yeah. And so you had you were already feeling overwhelmed with different expenses and you're saying mm-hmm. that in the Philippines – you prioritize the car loan over home home loans. Um, yes. <laughs> many people here do the same. I have seen so many people essentially broke as that have like the fanciest cars. And it's like, dude, like or check, this is not going to work for you long term. Um, but yeah, so you're certainly not alone in that. Um and um so you Chose not to continue with the property because your friend pulled out, and that property mm-hmm. has since gone up three hundred percent, and it now mm-hmm. yields at a twenty five percent rent yield, <laughs> and you lost fifty percent of your deposit with the developer yeah. because you pulled out of the off the plan. So that's like a, a you know, I mean that's a that's a great example of a lesson, and what you've learned from that was that while at the time you blamed your the person that you were doing the deal with, um, you're now realising that it was actually the fear, the fear of the debt and doing it on your own that got in the way mm. of you getting that 300% return. And, you know, I don't think there's a person listening that would not say that they haven't missed out, myself included, that they haven't missed out on a freaking awesome deal or an opportunity or a I could have but I didn't um, opportunity because of fear. And, you know, fear is one of those things that if we get caught up in the what ifs, um, (laughs) it, it has the potential to totally stuff our financial future. Um, and this is why I'm such a fan of coaching and education, whether it's positive real estate or, you know, some other form of education. You've you've got to give yourself enough information that you're empowered to take action because if you let fear stop you, you know, take Ram's instance here, take the multitude of times I could have done something and I didn't, um, it'll it'll just stuff your financial future um so ram thank you thank you for sharing that one Mm -hmm. um so tell me you've got a note here that if you're living in one of your units you're broke but if you see me living in the street you've got positive (laughs) cash flow (laughs) once again (laughs) i mean Currently, my my portfolio. Um, I'm I'm a little bit of break even. I I earn a little positive, but if I ha- it because right now I'm living with my unit right now, ah. but if I uh, less it out, um, I, I got more money. <laughs> You've got more money <laughs> <laughs> because everything is on mortgage. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, you've got a note here that you've learned how to manage your emotions well in regards with investment, which is mm-hmm. massive. Um, you have a very high risk tolerance and you have a very high discomfort tolerance, which is amazing. And not everybody has that. I don't <laughs> think I've got as high a discomfort zone as you do. <laughs> um, and but it is important to get out of your comfort zone, whether it's, yeah. and I'm not suggesting everyone needs to do what Ram's done, which is <laughs> extraordinary <laughs> and not normal, but, um, you know, my hat off to you, Ram. You're an amazing, <laughs> amazing person. Um, but we do have to expand our comfort zones. One of the lessons that I wanted everyone to get from today's interview with Ram is that, if we're comfortable, I'll use Ram's phrase. Um, he linked it death is debt, and that's how debt is viewed in the Philippines. Um, 
and it's many cultures as well. I meet with people across all walks of life and, and many people say, oh, in my culture, having a mortgage is viewed as, or having a debt or a loan is viewed as, you know, really bad thing rather than leverage if used well. And I would say comfort equals death. And I would say comfort equals the death of dreams because if you are comfortable, you are not growing and you're not taking action to expand where you're at to get a result that's different from everybody else. And that's a big, broad sweeping statement, and I'm sure many will disagree with me. <laughs> but in my time in coaching, I've found those that are determined to be comfortable and not step out of their discomfort are the ones that struggle the most to, to get a result. So I just want you to hold that in your head. So tell me a little bit about your goals, because I've got a I can see your goal here is to have quite a number of rental properties. Tell me about that. <laughs> yeah, um, well, currently, yeah, I don't have a car, I don't have a home. I would say I'm on the on and off living on the street, but currently I have pretty much good number of portfolio. Yeah. Both for personal and I have um co-partners, um, both local and international yep. properties. So my goal is to have at least at least 20 rental properties. Yep. And maybe retire on a beachside community, a small house, something <laughs> like that. Sounds I fantastic. Know. And so uh, I am concerned when you say you're sleeping on the street. Can you quantify that for me? Yeah, I I sometimes I live I check in on a hotel. I live with some friends. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> I said, so you're I, not I live sleeping with rough. family. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good to know. And and that's a choice that you're making. To, yeah, it's just, for, yeah, because you yeah. are comfortable with discomfort. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but my family doesn't know that I'm having this kind of strategy. They just know that I'm visiting them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so you're aiming for 20 and you've got around four properties at the moment, haven't you? Uh, um, seven properties. Seven. I have like, yeah, seven properties. Um, four is already turnover. It's already on rent. Um, yep. Three is about to come. Yeah. So you've got some off the plans or stuff being constructed at the moment that's, yeah, that's yeah. going through the process. And so originally what was holding you back from investing in real estate? <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, um, fear. One of those. Yep. Another thing is commitment. Um, <laughs> Tell and, me about uh, that. <laughs> commitment, because you know, you have um, you have something to look at to pay again, and you have you know the mortgage and those kind of stuff yep. that you have to pay monthly on a bank. So yeah, it's a commitment. It's a long term commitment. It is a long. And it's a lifelong. I mean, it's a lifelong commitment because you still have to fix your room, whatever, and move it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, um, and I also have a scarcity mindset. I might lose everything, you know, but you know, realizing now, I transform my scarcity mindset to more of an abundance mindset that you will never lose everything. Yeah. Opportunity is everywhere. You just have to act on it, you know. Yeah, that's amazing, Ram. Mm. Um, so, and I mean, one of the things, because I've had some challenges with property over the time, there's been times mm. when, you know, I've been very concerned about my mortgages, my interest rates, how I'm going to do it. Mm. Do I have to sell something? And I always knew that even if I did lose everything and not that we ever go out to start mm. investing to do that. And certainly we don't coach people where they get in a position to lose everything. But mm. if you are, if you do push yourself and you worry about it, you it, it never takes you the same amount of time to build it back up. Because even if you were to lose the physical things, you've still got all the knowledge and experience that you gleaned mm. from that first time around. Yeah. And I've always found when I've made a mistake, I've done it so much faster the second time when I've gone to gone to fix it up. So um, what do your friends and family think? <laughs> Well, um, this is one of the topics that we are really connected. So I really choose my friends who has the same mindset as mine. 
um, well, in my family, um, this uh, the, uh, we have four topics that we're passionate about. One is <laughs> our faith. Yep. Second is real estate. Um, yes. Third is trading, and the fourth one is investment. Um, actually, they are also a property investor on their own. Um, yep. Actually, um, recently. Uh, my other sibling struggled with her investment due to her circumstances. And um, yeah, me and my brother uh, is willing to jump in just to go through her investment. That's amazing. Um, because mm. often clients uh, really feel like they are doing it on their own. They don't feel like they can talk to family and stuff. So that's awesome if you've got that, um, that opportunity to... Um, learn mm -hmm. from each other obviously your faith like you said your real estate mm -hmm. your trading your investment I mean they're all quality quality conversations to be having family and I'm I'm sure that many people would wish they had that same opportunity um, with family not everyone's as fortunate um, and for people that are watching this video who are thinking about growing a portfolio, but they are scared, they are fearful, they they would be really, really scared of making a choice like you have made um, to do whatever it takes to see your dream through. Because that's essentially what you're telling me is you will do whatever it takes to see your journey through and you pepper it with travel and doing other stuff that is important to you which is equally important but what would you say to somebody that's fearful of this okay um i think there is no right time we just have time <laughs> so yeah. we need to yeah i mean you need to have you need to make our decisions but before that i think um your mindset and um, your heart set need to be aligned when investing. Yep. If they are not aligned, that's I think the biggest risk. You cannot be overly confident and go rah 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 without knowledge and vice versa. You can have all the information strategy and have no faith. I think they need yep. to be together aiming yep. for that um, particular goal. Yep. And um, I've also got some notes here. There's no wrong decision. You said. Yeah, um, yeah, there's no people always think of failure, but to be honest, failure is not it's not a definition for me. It's just all learnings. Yeah. Um I mean it could happen rather than avoiding wrong decision, just mitigate the risk. Um um just be surrounded with um like-minded people like me. I have my brothers, I have my inside and outside. Um get the right people, create a network, you know. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of volatility on the short term, but if you're looking long term, it's just a small bomb. Um, diversify. Don't, as we heard most of the time, don't put all the eggs in one basket. Um, yep. That's why um, creating a portfolio is the logical ways, solutions. Yep. Um, because you can navigate a lot of options and it minimizes the risk. Um, yeah. yeah, and then I you know inside just burn the boat, embrace the challenges, keep the faith. You know, you'll try to understand yourself more if you've gone through this. Yeah, I love what you say <laughs> here. Um, because whenever I interview somebody for a podcast, um, I get them to think about some of the questions I'm going to ask, and um, people often fill it out and send it back to me, which is great because then I've got all the notes and all of the thinkings. And one of the things that Ram said here when he filled it out, which I think is, is so important. Actually, there's two things. The first I'm going to go back to his comment on there's no wrong decision. It's all just learning. I heard somebody, I think it was actually Shay Witten, um, one of the owners of um, Positive Real Estate. And she said um, that you're either winning or you're learning. Like there's no failure. You're winning mm -hmm. or you're learning. Simple as that. And if you reframe failure for yourself, because we're taught, you know, don't copy, don't get it wrong, don't make a bad decision. If you let go of that stuff, that it's learning, it's teaching you something, you're learning or you're winning, then it totally changes how your brain thinks about it. The second thing that Ram said that I think is so important 
is where he says, burn the boat, embrace challenges and keep the faith. Growth and wisdom happen in this area. Uh, it, you could not have said anything true, Ram. Like you don't get to, to be wise and to learn stuff without trying stuff. And mm -hmm. if you just say, this is what I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm going to do it no matter what, and you burn that boat, you know you can't go back, you can't change your mind, you can't waver mm -hmm. on it, you have to move forward. And I think when you're approaching an investment journey, understand your why, like know what it is mm -hmm. that you you want to achieve this for. And then every time you go to waver and go, oh, this is too hard, I'm going to give up. It's like, why am I doing this? I've burnt the boats. I'm going to keep moving forward. This is just a glitch or a bump in the journey. It's a short-term challenge for a long-term long -term goal. What are your biggest goals? I'm going to go off script here, Ram, and put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. I, I know you, I know you um, are talking 20 properties to be able to be on the beach and do your thing. What has motivated you on this journey? Why are you prepared to go to such lengths to achieve a result for yourself? Well, one thing's on the the pragmatic answer of that, or the more realistic, because um, we don't have really a, a good um, retirement system here, so you have to be prepared. So I'm just preparing. Yep. Um, but um, you know, so that once you are retired, whatever knowledge you can through with yes. your life, you can just be able to share it to everyone and then pass on. And then I think that's the biggest legacy you could yeah. probably do. Yeah. Yeah. And um Ram, I don't think I'm talking out of school to say um uh, one of the big things you want to do is share a lot of your knowledge with your community. Um, mm -hmm. and with the team um, in the Philippines. Um, you know, mm -hmm. you want to show people how to create wealth, how to how to build a portfolio, how to give yourself some financial choices. And I think that's amazing. So it's a much bigger picture beyond Ram just collecting 20 properties. It's it's your why, it's your it's your mm -hmm. big thing about leaving a legacy and and being able to um, give people those safety nets that maybe you don't have as much access to um, mm -hmm. at the moment. So um, if I could ask you the last question that I always ask, um, actually, before I do that, is there anything else that I've missed that is important to you to share and get across to people today? Is there anything that you've wanted to share that I haven't asked you? Mm. I think that's pre pretty much that's it. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and then um, the question I ask at the end of all of the podcasts, um, podcast episodes is if you could go back in time and visit mm -hmm. young Ram <laughs> uh, uh -huh. and give Ram, young Ram, 20 year old Ram, some advice, um, what would you say to Ram knowing what you know today? I could have do it earlier. Because you know, if, if earlier is much better, <laughs> earlier yeah. is much better. <laughs> and uh, funny you say that, Ram, because pretty much everybody <laughs> says the same thing, no matter where they are or you know what they've achieved. They just say, "Do it sooner." <laughs> yeah, oh, now that's awesome. Well, mm. a massive thank you today. Thank you for sharing your story because it certainly is a phenomenal one. Um, you know, mm. and I'm I'm in awe of. Uh, what you've done and what you're achieving and continue to do, Ram. It yeah. is a um, it is an absolute honor to have you as part of our team and the deals that you put together with Sam and the guys. Next level. Yeah. So um, thank you again for today, mm. and um, wishing you success. And we'll speak. <laughs> <laughs> we'll speak again soon. Thanks, All Ram. Right. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Bye. Hundred <laughs> percent. Bye, Dal. Hey, thanks for listening to Property Investor Tales. Remember to subscribe so you get notified every time a new episode drops. 
As you can guess, I love hearing people's property investor tales. So if you'd like to share yours, then please get in touch with me via email at propertyinvestortales at positivementor.com.au. We would also love your feedback and I would appreciate a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Remember, you can watch all of these podcasts over on YouTube at Positive Mentor or at positivementor.com.au. Until then, take care, happy investing, and bye for now.